Hello learners, welcome to DLED program. I am Dr. Vanita Anand and today we are going to discuss CCE in EVS. First of all, what does CCE stand for? CCE stands for Continuous and Comprehensive Evaluation. As the name suggests, CCE has twofold objectives, continuity in evaluation and assessment of broad-based learning and behavioral outcomes. Let us discuss them one by one. Continuous. Evaluation of identified aspects of students' growth and development is a continuous process rather than an event. It is not an event. Assessment or evaluation cannot be at the end of the term. It has to be continuous, that is, right from the beginning. Built into the total teaching learning process, entire phase of the teaching learning process has to be evaluated and spread over the entire span of the academic session. That is what makes it continuous, right from the beginning to know what is the entry point and then at each stage the learners are evaluated. Evaluation in different aspects, formative, summative, with different purposes, but evaluation has to be continuous. It means regularity of assessment. It has to be regular throughout, not that you are doing it today, you are not you are doing it in one class, you are not doing it in another class. No, it has to be regular. Frequency of unit testing throughout the student needs to be tested. Diagnosis of learning gaps. Why the student is being tested throughout? To diagnose what are the learning gaps. Use of corrective measures to cater to those learning gaps. After the corrective measures have been provided, retest whether there has been any improvement and self-evaluation. This is very important. The student must evaluate himself or herself also. Why comprehensive? The scheme attempts to cover both scholastic as well as the co-scholastic aspects of students' growth and development. It is not just the academic part that is being evaluated. Even the co-scholastic areas of students' growth and development as they are also important part of students' personality. And here the attempt is not just to see student growing academically, but all-round development is the emphasis of education. That is why the evaluation also has to be comprehensive. Since there are abilities, attitudes, aptitudes, that can manifest themselves in forms other than written testing. The term refers to application of variety of tools and techniques, both testing as well as non-testing, and aims at assessing a learner's development in the areas which I am going to discuss. Actually, there are a number of things, there are a number of attitudes that they cannot show in a written test. Rather. They can just memorize and write it in the written test and the teacher may get to have a wrong knowledge about the aptitudes and attitudes of a student. That is why not just testing but a variety of tools like personality tests, observations, field of testing, etc. should be used to assess the learner's development in the following areas. Knowledge, understanding and comprehension, Applying, analyzing, evaluating, and creating. Not just knowledge and construction. The higher areas of knowledge, the higher aspects of learning, evaluating, creating, analyzing are also to be evaluated. The right of children to free and compulsory education act, that is RTE 2009. Under the RTE act, what does CCE mean? Here, CC means students will be evaluated on a round-the-year basis instead of being tested in through a year-end only exam. That is not just summatively, they have to be evaluated throughout. Giving every child an opportunity to experience success and enjoy learning. Now this is very important. A student 
might not be that good academically but might be very good in other areas dancing music dramatics speaking etc so the teacher must provide an opportunity to all these students where they can experience success and the teacher must utilize all these ways to make the student learn if it is done the student is going to enjoy learning look for variety of abilities that a child is good at and also help the child by supporting him or her to fill the gaps in learning through many and varied informal assessments remember informal assessments that is while they are doing dramatics while they are speaking showing their knowledge through speech dramatics dance music the teacher must support the child by giving them opportunity where they can display the knowledge that they have they learn by these things and they are also assessed on these things and these things these assessments are informal there are certain key features of cc it aims at improving students performance by identifying his or her learning difficulties if the assessment is done just at the end of the year identifying the learning difficulties of the student is not going to help the student it's not going to improve students performance if it's done throughout then it might provide a constructive feedback to the student whereby the student's performance can be improved and the summative assessment itself becomes better students are assessed at regular time intervals right from the beginning that is why continuous in the beginning the teacher gets to know about the previous knowledge about the entry point of the students and then she assesses the student at a regular time interval so as to know whether the improvement is taking place or not whether the student is going on the right track or not teachers employ suitable remedial measures for enhancing their learning performance now when the teacher finds that there are certain learning gaps that are there in the student the, it is the responsibility of the teacher to provide suitable remedial measures the scheme of cce has inbuilt flexibility for schools to plan their own academic schedules as per specified guidelines on cce now it is not compulsory for all the schools to follow the cce pattern as such it is quite flexible and the schools as well as the teachers can do it as it suits them best but it has to be done within the specified guidelines given by the cbsc objectives of cc development of skills cognitive affective and psychomotor basically the written tests which are end of the term test mostly they just see the cater to the cognitive aspect affective and psychomotor aspects are normally not assessed now here with the help of cc because it is continuous and it is comprehensive affective and psychomotor domain can also be tested how the attitudes how the values are being formed de emphasize rote memorization in a written test the student can just mug up the answers and reproduce them when they are asked to here the teacher is not just doing summative assessment she is assessing the student throughout the course right from the beginning hence she gets to know whether the child is just memorizing or has he understood the concept even if the teacher is not sure whether it is memorization or understanding it is the responsibility of the teacher to create circumstances where the student can be tested like taking them to the field make them exhibit behavior and so on whereby the rote memorization is completely deemphasized provide constant feedback to students as well as teachers now the feedback that the formative assessments give is not just for the benefit of the students students of course get benefited they get to know where there are gaps where there are problems it also gives a feedback to the teachers the teachers get to know whether the way they are teaching is suiting the class age interests and needs of the students or not if he or she finds that there is a need to change 
then the teachers must de change their methods and strategies. Use evaluation as a tool to enrich student learning. That is the purpose of CCE. The basic purpose is to enrich student learning. And here, evaluation is used as a tool. Constant feedback, constant observation of the student makes it sure that the student is learning and is making proper conceptualizations. Make evaluation an integral part of teaching learning process. As I told you in the beginning, evaluation is not an isolated incident. It is not just the end of the term incidents. Rather, it is an integral part of teaching learning process. Whenever the teaching learning is going on, evaluation is going on. Feedback is being given. Improvements are ascertained. The parameters to be kept in mind. Here, the learner is assessed, that is, throughout. Use a variety of ways to collect information about learners' learning and progress in subjects and cross-curricular boundaries. One, it's not just a written test that the teacher is going to utilize. Rather, he or she has to use a variety of ways, a number of tools. Then, the progress not just in subjects but also in cross-curricular areas is to be seen. Whether the child is actually applying the knowledge that he has got in the real life circumstances. Collect information continuously and record the same. The information that is being collected on a day-to-day -day basis has to be recorded so that it can be seen, it can be ascertained that the student is going on the right track so that the assessment remains focused. Give importance to each learner's way of responding and learning and time it takes to do so. Now there might be some slow learners, there might be different ways the students respond to the question. Everything has to be given importance to. Report on an ongoing continuous basis and be sensitive to every learner's responses. So whatever responses the learner is giving, they are to be kept record of and they are to be reported if there is a need. Provide feedback that will lead to positive action and help the learner to do better. This is a must for every teacher. The feedback that the teacher is providing has to be positive. It is the kind of feedback that should encourage the student to do better. Now there are certain things that a teacher must never do because here the assessment is continuous and comprehensive. There are certain things that the teachers must avoid. The teachers must never label learners as slow, poor, unintelligent, etc. The teacher must never use phrases like you cannot do better than that, you are good for nothing. Rather, the teacher must use positive statements whereby she should say, this is better than the previous one, you can do better next time, I am sure you can do it. And the teachers must never compare between the two students. The teacher must never make comparisons between the two students. The comparison that is there has to be inside the child, that is, what the child was previously and how much improvement has been made till now. The teacher must never make neg negative statements, as I just told you. There are certain kinds of assessment that are used in CCE. First is formative assessment and second is summative assessment. Formative assessment, it is carried out during the course of instruction right from the beginning. It provides continuous feedback to both the teachers as well as the learners and for the betterment of both. It helps in taking decisions regarding adequate and appropriate modifications in the transactional procedure and the learning activities, that is, for the teacher. If any kind of transactional procedures, methods or strategies or learning activities and material aids need to be changed, or certain modifications need to be made, then formative assessment is giving valuable feedback to the teacher as to where these modifications need to be done. Summative assessment carried out at the end of the course of learning in the form of two essays that will come to them just now. 
it measures or sums up as the term suggests summative assessment how much a student has learned from the course end of the term end of the course it is usually a graded test what do we mean by graded test that is it is marked according to a scale or a set of grades there may also be marks that might be given for the summative assessment they are also used for the purpose of certification and promotion like the results that the students get at the end and there are certain certification that is given to the student where the student lies how much the student has learned in the classroom where is his rank and all those kinds of things teaching learning of evs teaching learning of evs entails certain things which are different from some other subjects encouraging analytical skills EVS is one such subject which encourage analytical skills among the children there are a number of things for which the student needs to have critical thinking abilities about caste system caste system society number of things that are there in the society the student must be in a position to see what is right and what is wrong support positive attitude now nationalism internationalism multiculturalism these kinds of things and values should be there in the student the teacher must ensure that a positive attitude towards these things is being inculcated among the amongst the students clarify values evs has lots of responsibility for inculcation of values there are a number of values that can be inculcated through evs like democracy discipline nationalism internationalism and so on it is very important that the value inculcation is a right process develop a child into a citizen who is compassionate and sensitive towards diversity in environment natural as well as social it is very important for us especially in the kind of society we are today that we have citizens who are compassionate and who are sensitive and this sensitivity for diversity can be for natural things as well as for social beings for the fellow human beings for the natural resources that we have and it is the responsibility of the evs to inculcate this compassion and sensitivity in the students evaluation in the evs classroom since it is cc so it has to be a continuous process it helps the teacher diagnose the learning gaps and difficulties in learning and provide remedies wherever needed learning process becomes efficient and effective when a student is being evaluated continuously learning gaps are diagnosed remedies are provided the learning has to become efficient and effective assessment can be carried out by a number of tools like self peers teacher parents and occasionally by other school staff all this helps to create a holistic picture of the child's development that is why it is comprehensive that is not just academic areas but also the non scholastic areas how the child is what is the personality of the child what are the likes attitudes aptitudes values and so on assessment here includes assessment of learning taking place through all the five senses logical thinking imagination and the feelings that is not just cognitive aspect even affective and psychomotor aspects are being catered to oral written and performance modes to assess child's learning not just written tests the students may be made to perform they may be made to do certain things in the form of dramatics role plays music dancing and they may be asked certain questions orally in in the form of quizzes in the form of oral testing and so on assessment of each child individually as well as in group as we talk about collaborative and cooperative learning it is important that a child must learn to work in groups also no doubt the child would be assessed individually but along with that the child should also be assessed in groups 
Diverse and balanced assessment makes assessment comprehensive. Since so many ways of assessment are being used, so the assessment becomes comprehensive. Let us take an example of food. Now there are various ways in which food can evaluation on food can be assessed. Group discussion on food consumed by animals can be done in the classroom. Match the food item with its taste. Identify the food items through smell only. Identify fruits and vegetables by touch only. Hear the kind of sounds made while eating different food items. Are they crisp? Are they soft? Arranging food items in a plate that look pleasing to the eye. Trying out variations in making curd from milk. Name a food item that you enjoy eating from your own lunchbox and another one from your friend's lunchbox. List the food items enjoyed by your friends and family members. So there can be an n number of ways in which it can be assessed. Modes of assessment can be self-assessment. It is very important that the student is assessing himself or herself, peer assessment done by the classmates. Sometimes it is more productive than any other assessment. Cumulative anecdotal records, whatever has happened right from the beginning. Assessment through projects, not only what has been made, but how it has been made. Extent and quality of participation, especially in group tasks, in group projects, how much the student has participated and what is the quality of that participation. Tools of evaluation, oral questioning in the form of tests, quizzes, regular testing written that is, practical assignments, daily observations. This is very important. No matter what other mode is being used, the teacher must observe the student on day to day basis. Individual and group activities since the student needs to be assessed individually as well as in group, homework, projects that are given again for out of class work, questionnaires, questionnaires can be made on anything, peer evaluation, rubrics, now here rubrics can be used, they can be used in the classroom, they can be used also for the activities done outside the classroom and even for the homework, they can be used for individual activity they can be used for group activity as well. Teacher's role. Teacher's role is diagnostic and remediation. He or she has to diagnose and then provide remedy. Portfolio received and maintained. It is very important to keep record of whatever events the teacher is observing and recording. Identify areas in which students need additional practice and give them opportunity to do this practice. Maintain checklist which the teacher has to make in the beginning, keeping the objectives in mind. Schedule observation, direct observation, indirect observation, but observation is a must. Facilitate peer assessment and self-assessment. For this also, the teacher can provide rubrics and can also encourage students, not only for self-assessment, but also to assess their classmates. Now there are certain areas how the grading is done in CCE as per CBSE. There are certain marks point which correspond to a grade and to a grade point. 91 to 100 is A1 and they correspond to 10 grade points. 81 to 90 is A2 and it corresponds to 9. 71 to 80 is B1, it corresponds to 8. 61 to 70 is B2, that makes grade point 7. 51 to 60 is C1, that makes 6. 41 to 50 is C2, it makes 5. 33 to 40 is D, that makes 4. And there are no grade points after that. 21 to 32 is E1, 20 and below is E2. Now this is the assessment design 
FAs, this is a tentative design. There is a flexibility in this design. April to July is FA1, July to September FA2 and in September there is an SA1. October to December is FA3, December to March FA4 and March is SA2. Every FA makes 10%, every SA makes 30%. Together the first part makes 50% and the second part makes 50%. In all, 100%. Now there are certain advantages of CCE. Elimination of subjectivity is the biggest advantage of CCE. Then it also reduces stress by identifying learning progress of students at regular time intervals on small portions of content. As there are FAs which are being taking place throughout, they contain small portions of content and that is why it is easy not only for the students to gain a mastery level of learning in that, but also it becomes easy to keep track of the learning progress of the students. Employing a variety of remedial measures of teaching based on learning needs and potential of different students. Desisting from using negative comments on the learner's performance, as we discussed previously. Encourage learning through employment of a variety of teaching aids and techniques. Involving learners actively in the learning process, that is, not just actively physically but also mentally. Recognizing and encouraging specific abilities of students who do not excel in academics but perform well in other co curricular areas, that is, why it is comprehensive helps in improving students' performance by identifying weakness in the beginning only, so that these weaknesses can be catered to. Present status of CCE It has been discontinued by CBSE in the upper classes, but it is still being continued in the lower classes. But some states like Telangana are still continuing with CCE. These are certain references for which the students can refer to. Now the CCE there were certain advantages but at the same time there were various disadvantages as being reported by the schools, teachers as well as parents not to mention the students. Keeping all these things in mind CBSE has discontinued and scrapped CCE in the upper classes and in the lower classes in future let us see what happens to CCE. Thank you.